Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. Thanks for joining me for this live stream. If you're out there and you can hear me, please say hi. I, I'll get started as soon as I see that people are watching. I already see that there are some people here. So in this video, somebody asked me on Facebook if I could recreate a, a blues guitar tone. And they sent me a, a link. I was going to play that on YouTube, but uh, I think my video would get demonetized if I played that because it's copyrighted. However, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and create a blues tone using real LPC5. And so that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to probably make a track just to show you, just to have fun, show you my process. Um, so let me switch to the view really quickly. Again, if you're here, say hi in the comments. I'll wait, make sure you guys can hear my voice loud and clear. Hopefully it's not too loud. Hopefully there's not a huge delay either. All right, so like I said, I'm using real LPC5. Now, the reason I'm using this one is because I have a lot of different guitars, and uh, recently, for some jobs that I've been doing, I've had to use, uh, I've had to look for certain sounds, certain type of playing styles, and um, I usually use ample sound guitars. Occasionally, I'll use other ones just in case um, I, I don't have the articulations I need. But I have been really, really enjoying. Real LPC and Real Strat too. Just the the uh, the workflow, the features, the stability of the program. Um, now th it doesn't come with its own effects. So usually I would use Amplitude, but I don't really like the way that Real LPC Five sounds with Amplitude. I don't know why it sounds really harsh, but I'm going to be using Guitar Rig Six today. So let's open up a track. And then on this, I'm going to insert Guitar Rig 6 and then start building from there. So if, you, if you're not aware, Guitar Rig 6 is Native Instruments Guitar Effects software. So I see some people viewing right now. So uh, please say hi if you're out there. Let me see if the live chat it even works. Oh, you know what? Uh, for some reason, it wasn't showing up on YouTube. Now it does. Real LPC, or rather, Music Lab Gang. Okay. BB King Time. The guy is good at what he does. Thank you. Hey, Maddie. You know, I, I'm i going to be honest. Jay, uh, Jake, you asked, do you like this VST more than Ample Sound? I don't like it more than Ample Sound. I would say that there are features with it, uh, within both of them that... Are stronger than the other. Um, for example, Ample Sound has incredible strumming, and I used that on a track recently because the strumming on Real LPC isn't that great or isn't as good as as Ample Sounds. Ample Sounds just sounds like it's more crisp. I don't know how to describe it. However, Real LPC, especially because of the uh, all the controls, all the the functions, it has way more articulations. Um, and the vibrato, I've been using it for more solo type stuff. Um, Ample Sound, however, has a great blues guitar that I think sounds, right off the bat, sounds better than this. However, this has a lot more articulations that I would I find useful. Okay, so now that I know that you guys are there, um, I'm going to show you my process. This is the sound of real LPC with no effects. <laughs> Now, for the blue sound that I was going for, it sounds more round, a lot smoother, a lot um, more mellow than, than this. So the first thing I'm going to do is change it from the bridge pickup to the neck. And that's immediately going to give it a softer sound. The pickup right here that's closer to the neck is going to pick up of more, of more of the fundamentals. Already it sounds smoother. 
The next thing is that the pick is going to also be closer to the neck. This is also going to make it more round sounding. Now I will not be using IK Multimedia amps uh, or Amplitube. I'm using Guitar Rig 6 because uh, as I said earlier, I found that the amps in Guitar Rig 6 or in um, Amplitube, they, they, they sound too harsh and I can't get the sound, the tone that I want. And I was looking a lot for, for different amp settings. All right, so the next thing is going to the mixer and turning off the pick. So the sound that I heard online, um, the guy was using his fingers to pick, so that's going to create an even softer attack. Now you're going to hear this come alive once I put in the amp. Um, so I'm going to go to components. There's a lot of presets here that are really cool that you can filter by genre, amp, characteristics, or characters, effects types, and even artists. But I want to build my own. So I'm gonna to go to the amplifiers. And I was messing around with this earlier. It didn't take a lot. Now there are different tones that you can get just for, and, and you can tell what it's gonna sound like just based on the name. Um, Tweedman would be a good one. All oh, Tweedman is a tube amp and it's gonna give you some, some distortion when you hit it hard. I don't know if I want that. I'm gonna try that. I'm just gonna put that here. That sounds good. But the other one I want to try is the Jazz Amp. So I turned off the Tweet a minute and I'm, I'm going to put this Jazz Amp here. And what it does is that it matches the amp with the cabinet, the matching cabinet. Um, so I also turned the Tweedman cabinet off. And this is the Jazz Amp. Let me turn off the chorus real quick. And I'm going to A and B them. I'm going to test the differences between them. So the Tweedman to me sounds more present and it has a little bit more of that distortion breakup because of the tubes. But I think for this sound, you know, I, I can't decide which one I like better. Neither of them are wrong. It's just all preference. Now, right off the bat, the jazz amp sounds quieter. And that's okay. We can raise the volume. I'm going to go with the jazz amp for now. So I'm going to get rid of this Tweedman. And then uh, I want some reverb in here. So... Uh, since this is blues, I'm going to go with the, re the vintage verb. And I was testing them out, and I think I like the silver long. But this sounds pretty quiet, so I'm going to, I'm going to do two things. On the real LPC plugin, I'm going to go to the velocity menu. And I'm gonna drag this down because I want my soft notes to be soft and my loud notes to be loud. Uh, right now it was set up so that my soft notes are hitting a velocity of 40 at minimum and I don't want that. But that's, oops, are you sure you want to remove this preset? Nope. However, that makes it quieter. So I'm gonna go over here to Guitar Rig and put in a compressor. I should put in a tube compressor. What a compressor is gonna do is two things. It's going to limit the loudness of the signal going into the amp, and it's going to bring up the quiet parts. So it gives it a more even sound. So you'll still hear the char characteristics of a quiet dynamic, but the loud sounds are gonna be brought down just a little bit. So let me play with this just a tiny bit. The ratio is pretty high already, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. 
bring down the input as well. And already you can hear that it's bringing this guitar sound up closer to you. So. That sounds beautiful, and it is a far cry from from this right here, with no effects. All right, then I'm going to turn on the legato because I want my when I play these notes, I want it to sound very smooth. Then I'm going to go to my key switches, and there's some other articulations that I want available. One of them is sliding down, so uh, slide down. I want it to be slide down trigger. That means if I hold out a note, I can have that slide out effect. It's set to F sharp right now. However, the interval is only three half steps. I want it to be a longer slide. Yeah, that sounds good. Then the next one is going to be a, lega a slide legato. That means between notes, you're going to have more of that, of that slide. So I'm holding A0. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me check my, my view. I'm holding down A0, and that is triggering slide legato. I love how easy that is. And then um, let's see if there's another one. Like Another one that I wanted. Um, no, uh, the next one is going to be velocity effects. So you can layer different articulations based on how hard you, you play the keys. And in this case, I'm only going to do the lower velocity, and that is bridge mute. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to set this to about 60. And I'll mess up when I'm playing, um, but that's okay because I could adjust the, the, uh, the velocity after I record. So I'm playing it really soft. And you can see right here on the menu, the display, that every time my velocity is 60 or below, it triggers that bridge mute. Anything above that is going to trigger just the regular sustain. I like that chord progression. It's in the key of G major. Oh, there's a little bit of buzz right there. I'm going to read the comments really quick. I'll go to here. I like without the jazz while so close. Yes, the tweet is better for BB King sound. All right. Um, so I don't, I don't know how fast this is. Maybe about two, three, four, one. I'm not good at tempos. I, I can play in time, but like thinking about tempos in my head is, is a little hard. I'll put 68. Let's see if that works. I think that's a pretty fair speed. Maybe a little bit quicker. 72. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna record the skeleton of the melody that I want. All right. I keep pressing three like I'm in Pro Tools. I, I've been using Pro Tools lately. I hate when that happens.
Um, I don't know if I should do that all together. Yeah, I should play that together. Let me see. Sorry about that. Let's try it one more time. Okay, that's good for now. Let me let me listen back to that and see if there's anything I want to change. I want those low notes to be bridge mutes. So right now there's they're over 60 in velocity. There you go. I want those to be bridge mute as well. Maybe this one a little bit sustained. I wish there was something in between the bridge mute and sustain. Maybe I want this these notes to hold out more and these to be closer to this. Oops, uh, no wonder. I was wondering why the, the grid looked weird. It's set to 16 triplets. That little that little grace note right there needs to be can't be as loud. Maybe this one could be a bridge mute. So all these little imperfections, I think, make it sound more human. Okay, and this note right here, it needs to be longer, but I want it to slide out. So I'll extend these. And then the slide out was F sharp zero. So I need to add a little slide out trigger right there. Maybe a little earlier. There's something that's bothering me about this. I don't, I'm trying to, you know, you know a part of MIDI programming is just problem solving. I, I think that's the biggest part of it is problem solving. So I'm tr it's this note right here. Maybe it was that too. 
So I'm going to make these. And then these are bridge mute as well. All right, let's listen to that one more time. I want a little slide right there, so I'm going to go back in. So between these two notes, I want more of a slide, and that is going to be A0. Um, let me see if that works like that. Oh, yeah, that sounds really good. That's too loud right there. So I also like to listen to, if, if there are notes that stand out, like um, I'm, I'm listening to the music, it sounds smooth, and all of a sudden a note jumps out at me, I will go and find that note and make sure that it's not standing out too much. But that's just my style. So right there. This is a little too loud. All right, so let me let me add some instruments here because I'm already thinking about a, a drum track. So doing the MIDI work, does it take away from the creation for you because it slows the real-time ideas that may come? No, um, no, it doesn't at all. It To me, it just makes it come more alive. Uh, it makes it come alive more, um, especially if it's a good plugin like this where little tweaks will make it sound better rather than making it sound worse. Um, with real guitar, with real LPC, I think it's very easy to achieve those, those sounds. I think of about it like, okay, this needs to slide right here, or I want this part to be softer, and there's always a way. And I've been using it more, so I'm learning more about the software, and it, it's just, it just works really well. I love it. Okay, let's, uh, let's open up. Tune track. I always forget the name of tune track. Um, I'm always looking for a superior drummer, but I forget to look in the tune track menu. Okay, so I want a dry sounding drum set with a very fast snare. And one of the ones I, I like to go to is either dry funk um, or jazz pop a yacht. I'm going to try dry funk for now. Now I can play the I could play a style, I could play a, a little groove. But Superior Drummer comes with a lot of great MIDI uh, MIDI grooves here. And when you go to tap to find, you can you can play your own groove in there. And then click on show results. And it's going to show all of the MIDI, um, the MIDI grooves that it has. And it's going to rank them by which one matches the one that you played. But these were all played by a real drummer, so they have the right feel. And I can cycle through them, audition them. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with the first one, the one that was closest to the one that I that I played. Um, I don't need anything elaborate. 
All right, let's go here to the track. Oops. I swear, I, I'm in Pro Tools mode right now. I was trying to stretch this out. Okay, so already right off the bat, I can hear that the timing of the guitar is not right. It's sort of ahead. Do you use, do you set up GM and Superior drums to suit your own needs? No, no, I don't. I've been using, um, I've been using it for a long time, and I, I just know where everything is, so I don't really set everything up. Have a set rather. It's very simple, but the sound. Oh, um. The drummers for uh, do you set up GM and Superior drummer to suit your yes I do Maddie um, there are there are a lot of presets here that I like already so I don't mess with the mixer that much um, if I do mess with anything like this like sending things to buses I usually do that within the DAW so I'll send all these channels to their own um, auxiliary channel within the DAW but there are certain presets here that I really love and and I'll use all the time, but I don't really set it up within Superior Drummer. So let's go into Real LPC. I think I'm gonna have to quantize some of these things. That way, uh, that way it could fall in line with the drum beat. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna add a legato right here because this is bugging me. That's a zero. I think it's A0. Oh, there you go. I'll do it right there too. Add that little legato slide. Yeah, that sounds a lot better. I'm gonna quantize this. Hopefully it doesn't sound too, too perfect. Okay, now this note is two ahead. I'll make sure these notes don't overlap. so this one is not really being heard and I'm going to also add a slide to that so a0 is right here remember that a0 triggers the legato slide and it has to be it has to come right after the the note that you want to slide I want to slide that one as well That sounds so good. Now, I'm not going to quantize this because I want to get that strum feel. As you can see, a slower strum is going to be a lot more spread out as far as the notes. So they're not going to hit at the same time. Otherwise, it won't sound realistic. As long as the last note on the strum ends up right on the beat, you're, you're going to be fine. Let's try to slide the, these notes right here. So I'm going to add A0 again. And I'll add it right here as well. Thank you. 
This one was rushed. I want those notes connected. I've been really enjoying this part. Um, I know a lot of people don't like to get into the details of everything. It just it's kind of tedious, but I like hearing it back and and hearing how it gets better and better. Oops. So you can hear that's really rushed. And that, this is going to be slid as well. And I'm going to make this bridge mute. This one too, maybe. Maybe this one too. Yeah, I like I like that. Timing is way off. Dude, I have been looking for someone doing blues on MIDI and had no luck. It makes me happy finding your stream. Oh, thank you, Juan. All right, so um, maybe I'll have a slide out on that part. It's going to be very quick. Maybe right there. Oh, no, 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 no. No. Maybe if I held that longer... But no, it's, it's, it doesn't sound good. Let, let's listen to the whole thing. Let's add, um, let's add keys. This is going to be very simple. So I'm going to use a course keyscape. Um, the clear choices are between roads and a world, sir. I like using the classic. Oops. I need something a lot more mellow sounding. Usually they have the sound I'm going for. There you go. You know what? But then I then again I don't want it to be too close to the the blues guitar or the LPC. That's not the sound I'm, I'm looking for. I need something more mo with more of a bell tone. That's getting closer, but too many effects. I think that's the sound I'm going for. Let's give it a try.
Okay, um, yeah, that's the sound I'm... It has a little bit too much bite. I want something that's going to hide away a little bit more. Um, very picky. But I could also change the parameters here, so... Mechanical, roads, tone, maybe less mids. So I'm use I'm changing the timbre. Alright, so I'm, I'm going to try not to get too fancy here because then it's going to take away from the beautiful guitar solo. Let's try again. about this. It's not the sound I want. Ugh. That sounds too close. No. I already did that one. Sorry guys, sometimes I spend a lot of long time just trying to find the right sound. You know, I'll try a Wurlitzer, a 200A. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, that, I think that was the sound I was going for. Thank you, Maddie. I want it to be felt more than heard, so. I think that was the right choice. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so I'll keep that for now. If it doesn't fit in with the bass later, um, then I'll change it. For bass, of course, it's gonna be have to have to be something jazzy. I'm gonna go between um, what is it, Easy Bass and Ample J Bass. I usually use Ample J Bass. Um, it's just very versatile and it has a great sound, but I paid I paid for um for easy bass and I don't use it as often as I'd like. Let's see. Tune track, easy bass. I might as well since I'm already using superior drummer. The sound is a little detail. I'm gonna listen to the vintage bass. Oops. The 
Let's listen to the presets. Mm. Warm vintage. All right. Hopefully it has a punch that I need. Okay, yeah, I like that. So let's record that. You know, although Cubase has retrospective recording, so whatever I played, it should have. It should have already recorded it, even though. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> this is literally my first time using retrospective recording. So for those of you who don't know what that is, if uh, I don't know if it happens to you, but I'll have an idea, and then when I decide to record it, I mess up big time. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's like it psychs me out or something actually recording it because I have this pressure of I'm ha I have to play it perfectly. But um, I usually get it right when I'm not recording. And what retrospective recording does is that it actually records you while you're practicing it. Thoughts on Moto Bass? Moto Bass is good. Um, I don't like the slap on it. There are certain notes, though, that just don't sound good, like the really, really low notes. Um, on on the high notes on the low strings don't sound good to me, but I love the the ability to go between sustain and mute by very small degrees, and I I like the control for the slide because it sounds very it sounds very nice. Um, however, I've always preferred sampled basses to modeled basses. I I don't know why. I think it just sounds more authentic. <laughs> All right, so let's go through this and just fix some stuff here. All I usually end my bass notes on the hit, the snare hit. Not right here though. So right now I'm just fixing timing. I like that I can feel the bass there and I, I can hear it a little bit, but it's not overwhelming. That's the, the beauty of easy bass is that it sounds amazing right out of the box. You don't have to tweak it much. It just sounds really good. By the way, if you like this video so far, please hit that thumbs up. Um, if you want to support my channel, you can send me a tip through YouTube or I have a PayPal link that you can uh, send money to to support my channel. Help me pay for my, <laughs> my office rent. Appreciate it. Now, usually I, I could just select everything and quantize and just leave it at that. But I like going note by note. You have to be patient with this stuff. All right, now I wanna add some little slides with the bass. Maybe right there. I forgot what, what the slide key switch is, so I'm going to have to look for it really quick. 
slide down, slide. So it's F, it's actually F sharp zero, which is the same as um, as real LPC. No, that's not true. Real LPC is A zero. Um, anyway, F sharp zero. So between this A and B, I'm gonna add that F sharp. Hopefully it works like that. Okay, that's not F sharp. No wonder it's not doing anything. That wasn't that impressive. I wanted a little bit more slide than that. Maybe I have to move this back. Now you can make this a lot more interesting by adding in ghost notes. Where are the ghost notes? Let me find that real quick. There it is, there it is. Hey Saucy Saja, Saucy, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I'm I'm doing a uh, live right now. I was, I was cr creating a blues guitar using real LPC, but I decided to create a track. So I can add in loud mute ghost notes. That's D sharp, E zero, just to make the bass line a little more interesting. But you're really not going to hear that with this mix. especially over the drums. So I won't bother with that right now. Maybe if it was by itself, playing by itself, then that would make sense. Let's listen to it so far. Oops. That sounds pretty cool. Wonder what else I could put in there. Um, you know what? Let me start fixing the the EQ on these instruments because the the keyboard sounds nice, but it's a little too thick. It's competing with the bass and the low notes on the guitar. So I'm gonna go into here, audio inserts, sorry, equalizer. And what I usually do is I start rolling off the bass. A hundred is a good starting point. It's already set to that. So you can, you'll hear it on the keyboard right now. You see on this part right here, it's very small, but I'm gonna start rolling off that low end. Let's do the same thing with real LPC. So you can see there's some bass in there, but it's not that much. We'll still do it anyway, just to be safe. I'll give it its own space. That keyboard is really loud, so I'm going to lower it just a little bit. Uh, 
Um, somebody asked me to add a B3. That sounds like a very good idea. B3 is not something I I usually play. I do love the B3 sound. Just it's very hard to play for me. Um, I can multimedia. Hammond B3X. I want a very hollow sound, so I can go through the presets, but I could also make my own preset here. Now, right now, I only have access to this top manual, the upper manual. So what I'll do... Oops, that's a lower one. Sorry. looking for b3 for a while would you recommend oh man uh i came multimedia's hammond b3x this is uh certified by the hammond corporation hammond company because this thing has so much control and it sounds authentic it's not sample based it's actually modeled all right i need something a little more hollow To turn off that percussion. Let's see if that's the right sound. Maybe a little less here. I don't have my expression pedal connected right now. Ah, uh, so I'm gonna have to make do some other way. Oh, I have my expression ribbon right here. But this sounds too close, so I'm gonna try to get more of that room sound. The cool thing about this is that you can actually change the mic position. Um, I just need to remember how, how I did it. Let's see, setup, mic distance, yeah. All right, let's try to get some more of the room sound. If it's possible. All right, maybe that's not the right tone, but we'll see. I messed up there. Let's do it again. I like it just barely there. Just filling out filling in those frequencies that are not being used. I like the sound. There was something there that I think the entrance was a little too abrupt. So let's let's um, ease into it. So the mod will or the expression, sorry, CC11. 
Interesting. Um, it's not even set up. So I'm going to ease it in. The volume is going to be set at zero. What you want to do is have it set high before and then have like a reset. And then that's when I want it to start going in from here. So it's going to ease in. Maybe a little slower than that. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. I, I just realized you can't even see that. I'm going to turn off my keyboard cam. So down here, I went to expression. Expression controls the dynamic or the loudness, the volume of the... However, you can control it right here in the MIDI editor. And what I did is that I set it to its highest point and then to its lowest point. The reason I did that is because if I just started with this going up to here, um, it probably wouldn't engage. So you have to do this, what's called a reset. So I, I um, basically made it go from high to low and then back to high. So I think that crescendo was a little too long. I'm gonna try it right here. Too quiet though. Okay, um, I'll let you guys help me. What what else is it missing? Maybe some percussion? I don't know. This is fun though. If you're just joining me, welcome. Um, I'm creating a blues track. I'm using a real LPC, Superior Drummer, Keyscape, Easy Bass, and Hammond B3X so far. Let's add... Um, Let's add percussion. For this, you know, I'll go to Superior Drummer again. I ha I bought Cuban or Cub uh, yeah Cuban Latin percussion. I don't use it all the time. I prefer Cuba from Native Instruments, but this has some good grooves in it that I find very useful. And I'm gonna go to the the Groove Library for Latin Cuban percussion. Then I'm gonna go down to Shaker. And this has a, a swing to it. I'll try horns after I add percussion. You know what, for now I'm going to extend this. Uh, I'm gonna double it actually. That way we can introduce more instruments later on instead of, let's see. So I'm gonna cut that in half. And this is gonna be my loop point right here. So if I just repeat. Yeah, that should work. Now, I wouldn't create a real song like this. I'm um, just, just giving a demonstration of the, of the possibilities. Maybe I'll add the, the organ over here. So this one ends before the second beat, but it starts on the second beat. So I'm just going to loop it right here. And for the drums, I'm going to create a little fill. So 
So I'm going to create a snare hit right there. And then I'm going to get rid of these beats right here. That's good. Where is that, that hi-hat? There it is. Oops. Add a little crash right here on the second part just to join it together. Yeah, um, I'm going to add the shaker right now on the second part, though. All right, so let's go back into Superior Drummer. and I like this right here. I might change the shaker, though. It sounds a little thick. Mm, maybe too much swing. I want some swing, so maybe I'll add it in later, depending on how it sounds. Oh, that sounds good, actually. Okay, so the shaker, I want it to sound a little bit, uh, it's too its too loud, first of all, but I don't want to lower the volume here because there's more percussion instruments. So I'm going to go into the mixer within Superior Drummer and lower the volume of that, that shaker. But I'm also going to make it sound a little more crisp. Uh, so I'm going to go to, where is it? Uh, the effects. EQ. I'm going to roll off a lot of the highs, so high pass. Let me loop this real quick so you can hear it by itself, how I start cutting out those frequencies. So as you can see, it doesn't even take up that much frequencies to begin with. But I want to take, a, take out some of that body. And just give it a little, little boost here. A little shelf. And maybe just a tiny bit of reverb. Just to soften it up. All right, let's hear that. Uh, this is sounding very good, actually. Just learn the guitar. <laughs> oh, the age-old argument against virtual instruments. I'm, I'm not, I'm not bothered by that. It's, it's just funny. Yeah, if I knew how to play guitar, I would, I would probably use it. But then again, um, I would have to buy all these different types of guitars different amps. Um, if I messed up, I would have to redo the, the entire recording rather than being able to fix individual notes or articulations 
it's just so much more fun for me personally to to do this process. And that's very true that some people know how to play guitar and 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 still use virtual guitars. It's just there's a different workflow and um, it's more convenient in many ways. All right, somebody asked for horns. Now I don't know what I'm gonna do here, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try something. Um, I've been really enjoying using using audio modeling stuff. Uh, maybe I'll use two trumpets, and then an alto sax. And then a tenor, maybe. I don't know what I'm going to do here. So this is all. This is all on the spot. So this might sound like crap after. I actually started as a keyboard player and learned about Ample Sound products through you, but it was so difficult and time consuming to get all the little nuances with the VST than just playing it. Okay. Um, All right, <laughs> now the pressure's on because creating horn parts is hard. Oh, trombone, yeah, you're right. Trombone. Let's see, where's tenor, tenor, trombone, there you go. Muted horn. So in this case, I, I'm thinking about a harmony. Let me try it with just the the unmuted or open. So I'll start off with that for now. Okay, so that's my my starting point. Let me quantize that real, real quick. Uh, I'm going to set the dynamic, which is the expression, CC11. And that's going to be, that's going to start getting louder, a little bit louder. Uh, up to here. And with a crescendo. I want that reset right there. All right, so that's too loud. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to bring this up because it's a little too quiet. Now, I kind of want an attack on these notes. So what I'll have to do is um, I'll have to create it here. And I'm going to take off the grid. That way I can make this. Make this a little more um, nuanced. <laughs> So I'm still trying to get used to to Cubase's um, ramping right here in the in, on these MIDI lines. It's it's a little it's a little difficult sometimes, but um, for the most part, 
it is very useful. So what this is is a little attack. Da, 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 da. So it's going to, this line right here, this long line, should continue going higher and higher. And this is going to be the challenge. Is if you can imagine one line going like, oops, that was an accident. One line coming from here to here, it should keep getting higher and higher, but with those little attacks. All right, that kind of sounds the way I want it to sound. Um, some of the some of the attacks are a little, little hot. I'll leave that for now. If it bothers me later, I'll I'll fix it. So rather than doing this work, I'm going to copy and paste this this line because it's going to copy that MIDI data and I'm just going to change the notes. Let's hear that. Also, the second trumpet um, it's it's using anti-phasing, but it's set to one on both of them. And what that's going to do is that it's going to make them sound out of phase. Um, so I want to change the phasing on that so that they don't cancel each other's frequencies out. Let's hear it. All right, so I like that, but the attack is a little late on that. So I'm going to move it back a little bit. Same on this one. I think the attack should have been on right on the beat, actually. I'm going to make sure this one is right on the beat as well. Otherwise, it sounds like the attack is just a little bit late and your ear perceives the note as if it's coming in late. Ba. So maybe maybe a decrescendo would would sound better. So it kind of fades out. Maybe that'll sound better. Nice vibrato at the end of the horn. Uh, there's no vibrato at the end of the horn. There shouldn't be anyway. I'll make it a little quieter. All right, let me, let me add a trombone in there. I'm going to do the same thing here because it's just all chords. Uh, that sounds funny. Uh, da, da, da. I'm, that's what I'm hearing in my head. Da. The reason I'm doing that is um, it's supposed to end on that A because it goes to an A minor chord. So the trombone is going to be playing that note. Uh, da, da, da. And I want it to sound kind of, um, I don't know what's the word, like very, very jazzy with the, the chromatic descent right here. Hopefully it sounds good. I mean, not everything that I think of in my head sounds good. Um, it started sounding good at the beginning. Da. I think it sounds weird because I'm playing a, an A, a B, and a D. Da, da, da. 
Well, let's hear it with the, the entire band. Okay, that doesn't sound terrible. Um, not as great as I want. Let me let me try it with the mute. Nope, nope. I'm gonna have to do something different with these horns. Uh, maybe it's the trombone. Okay, um, that's okay for now. I'm going to change the panning on this. Maybe have the trumpets on one side. Trombone kind of kind of off as well. Yeah, I think it's a note that's off. Maybe I'll have the alto double one of the instruments. That way it has more of a a reedy sound. Let's see. Where are you alto? So I'll do the same thing here. Ba -da -da -da. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to do that again. Because I, I did that before and it didn't sound good. Ba -da -da. I'm going to make that alto a lot breathier. Let me hear it without the trombone. I think the trombone's ruining it. And I'll add some vibrato to the alto that is set to the mod wheel on the keyboard um i'll go ahead and program it in where is mod wheel mod wheel their modulation cc1 so i'm going to draw that in here oops I'll put that in the center, that way it's nice and even. Maybe a little less vibrato. Vibrato makes an instrument stand out. It makes it heard over other instruments. Okay. Um, and then let's do something with this, with this tenor. Oh. I need to listen to that melody again. See you later, Maddie. I keep thinking this is going to sound good, but it's probably not.
saxophones to the right side just to give it its own space okay I uh, forgot the trombone All right, so I'm not really used to mixing horns. No horns, I say. <laughs> um, so is it the mix? What is it, the, the tone or the arrangement? You let me know. I don't want to over, I don't want to complicate this track because uh, I think simple is often good. I'll save that trumpet part for now. Dude sounds good to me. Um, let me add some little ornamentations with like a piano sound. Nothing, I'm not gonna fill it up, just, just add some, a couple notes here and there. Yeah, it's not, it's not blues. I wanted to create a blues sound like so. Um, that sound that you sent me on the video, way too much. <laughs> that sound that you sent me on the video, I was trying to come up with something close to it. You know, sometimes you just have to let the music direct you rather than the other way around. Am I right? Okay. G Illish, you created a monster here, so this is your fault. All right, let's uh, let's start adding. I'll start playing when I feel like. So there was some good things right there. Uh, I want to do that again. Here, I'm going to turn on my, my cam real quick so you can see my hands. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what I wanted. Just something very light in the high register just to complement the sound. Um, let's see. 
All right, let's listen to the whole thing. I'm gonna end this video soon because it's, it's uh, getting a little long. So from the beginning, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna keep the horns in there. They just didn't sound good. It's not finished, but that would take me maybe a couple of hours more just to get it exactly the way I wanted. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this this video. I want to do more of these because it's fun. Um, it's fun talking with you guys and getting your, your feedback. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, leave a comment below Tell me what you thought. If you want to support my channel, there is a PayPal link in the description or you can, if you're live in this chat, you can uh, send a tip and I would greatly appreciate it. So I'll see you next time. Take care.